Attention, visibility, interaction, and protection. These are the four pillars of POC's AVIP series, and as I've discovered firsthand, a mantra that speaks to their entire line of helmets, apparel, and accessories. I've worn the white ventral airspin on just about every ride for the past year, and they just sent me the new NFC version. So stick around if you'd like to learn more. I've told this story before, but my first experience with Pac was at Interbike several years ago. As I was walking the floor trying to find my next meeting, I saw a guy about my size in bleach white protective gear sprinting across a booth like a gymnast and throwing himself back first and upside down into a wall. The booth he was in was Pox. They got my attention and everyone else's. And now 10 years later, they're one of the biggest soft good brands in our industry. But in all that time, I never owned anything Pock until about a year ago when they sent me the Ventral helmet to review. Since then, it's been my number one go-to helmet because it's highly visible and the modern, almost, I don't know, cubist design really grabs your attention. It's also hellaciously comfortable, incredibly light, and practically vanishes when you put it on. The inner padding and secondary retention mechanism are perfectly placed, and the straps are light and ribbon-like without feeling thin or flimsy. You also get little rubber pads in two of the front vents, which are there to keep your sunglasses from slipping when you take them off. I love the little things, and this is one of the best little finishing touches I've seen. It's just clever and infinitely usable. So I covered attention and visibility and kind of touched on interaction. So A, V, I, but what about the P? Protection. Well, I regret to say that I accidentally tested that as well. That's right, I crashed it, and I crashed it hard. See, I set out for a little 30-minute recovery spin, super easy, you know, the equivalent of like walking your dog around the block. And there's this little connector trail between two streets in my neighborhood that has an off-camber downhill chicane. I've ridden it like a hundred times, but this time I was on a bike I hadn't ridden in a while, and I overbraked it. The front wheel washed out and I hit the dirt harder than I've hit the dirt or pavement in my life. It was like a whip that started with my left knee, my left hip, my left shoulder, and bam, the left side of my head was the crack of that whip. Long story short, I was only a mile or so from home, so I was able to ride it out, but when I took off my helmet, it was trashed and I knew immediately that a concussion was imminent and I was lucky I didn't get knocked unconscious. Anyway, I managed to post my ride to Strava, of course, before I went inside and get cleaned up, and practically by the time I checked my email later that night, my friends at Pac had seen the ride on Strava and were already asking where they could send my crash replacement helmet. Now, you may be wondering why I bring that up, and it kind of sounds like a humble brag, and I assure you it's not. I'm mentioning it because it speaks to the heart of the ethos that pervades the entire company. They want to protect athletes and everybody there from the board of directors to the marketing team cares about that mission. And it meant a lot to me that they go above and beyond to make sure I'm okay and get me up and running again. It reminds me of the time I toured the Mesa Boogie factory in Petaluma, California. See, I'm also a guitar player and I've played a Mesa amplifier for the past 15 years. So when I happened to be in Petaluma one day with my wife, we randomly stopped by the Mesa factory completely unannounced. We were kind of peeking in the open garage bay doors out back and one of the workers approached us and said we should just go up front and ask for a tour. We did and one of their A&R guys dropped everything to give us like a 90 minute walkthrough of the factory, how they build their amps and tell us about their history. I even got to see the original prototype of my amp. My wife, who couldn't care less about any guitar or bike nerd stuff, said it's one of the coolest tours she's ever been on. Needless to say, I'll never play anything else and Pac's attention to my protection and well-being moved me in the same way. I don't think you'll catch me wearing a Giro, cask, or bell helmet ever again. Not because they're not any good, because they are, but because I know the people at Pac truly care about my safety, and they care about yours too. And that is where the new NFC version of the Ventral Spin helmet comes into the picture. That was a pretty good segue. The NFC version 
is identical to the base model in every way. Still includes Pox patent pending silicone pad system, the revolutionary spin technology, and the high performance EPS liner with targeted and optimized density that provides an ideal balance of low weight and crash protection. It also has the same fully wrapped unibody shell construction, but underneath that flat black shell is a near field communication device that allows you to store your emergency contact info. So let's say I was KO'd and happened to be 100 miles from home instead of one. My iPhone is a company phone and it's mandatory that I lock it. I use Face ID, but I don't know that the EMT would think of that when he's trying to reach one of my loved ones. Since we're all riding longer and generally going solo these days, having this little transmitter with an easy to use app interface is a huge peace of mind. I find myself wearing this new helmet as much as I wore the white one, but I'm a little bummed it's only available in one color. Hopefully by the time you see this, that'll change. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to grab a POC Ventral NFC for yourself, please click the link in the description. And if you liked this review, please hit the subscribe button to be notified when I post new content. Okay, see you next time.